I'm seriously uh, unhappy with that. Uh, you know, he made a big mistake because I'm angry and uh, he didn't want to make me angry. I think that's pretty disappointing. Oh, I'm not going to say any more about it. Atlanta Games, the Brazilian won the last day confrontation, forcing Ainsley over the line before the start gun. That was in the final race, and it disqualified Ainsley and pushed him into silver medal position. It was no coincidence that, uh, that after that Olympics in Atlanta, Ben went away and did some match racing with uh, some, some really good British match racing guys um, and learned you know, how to control those situations. Robert Scheid was leading Ben Ainsley in the penultimate race. Scheid had defended his Laser World Championship performances three times and looked set to successfully defend his Olympic gold medal too. Would Ainsley have to settle for silver again? As Scheid finished in second, his body language said it all. He believed that he was on target for gold. Ainsley finished fifth. It was a result that left him with everything to do in the last race. The crux of the matter being that if he'd finished one place further back, gold would have been impossible. Now, to win gold, Ainsley had two options. Win the race and hope that Scheid finished ninth or worse, or hassle Scheid and stop him finishing better than 22nd. One minute to go to the start. Robert Scheid looks behind. Ainsley is just inches behind him. And look at Ainsley's eyes looking under that sail. Fine. And there is the Brazilian. Well, he's jived round. This is like America's Cup match racing. Ignore the other race. It doesn't matter to these two. That is quite extraordinary. That is like a Formula One start with two of the cars doing circles whilst everyone else goes round the track. I feel that at every opportunity, he never gives the Brazilian a chance to get to a different gear that none of these boats possess. If Scheid gets past Ainsley, there's every chance he can get into the top 20. So look at Ainsley now. He's got Scheid at the back of the pack. That's still not good enough. He's going to try and slow him down. The leader went round this mark about three minutes ago. And this is extraordinary. Ainsley has let his sail out. Scheid is trying to escape. He is, this is exactly like cat and mouse. Scheid is going to try and turn round and do a jump. Scheid is sailing the other way down the racetrack because he can't escape. That's all right, says Ainsley. I'll go back and get you another way. Well, Scheid was one sailor of the year, and ben, ben Ainsley is having him for breakfast right now. Ainsley at the moment is just trying to hold the Brazilian, just hold him out. We, the Brazilian has no right of way here. Ben has got all the rights in the world, and he's allowed to just sail and keep, keep the Brazilian from going around the boy. This is That's incredible. what he's doing. He's just chasing him downwind, chasing him away oh. from the boy. Right. Incident. That is confrontation. There was a collision there. There's the one thing I really remember is just how relentless he was. He was there, and we just picked him up in his boat, above our heads, and just carried him up the, carried him up the pontoon, clapping and cheering, and yeah, great brilliant Team GB. Ainsley reasoned that the protest between him and Shide would have no bearing on the outcome of the Olympics, and asked the Brazilian to drop the action. But Shide remained resolute. The proceedings went on into the night. Even for an experienced Olympic team manager, this was a big moment. Experience of sitting there watching the two top laser sailors in the world who I'd seen countless times in the water and for the first time seeing them both in a protest room with a lot at stake was, was one that will remain with me for quite a long time. The protest went Ainsley's way. Scheid was disqualified. Britain, gold in the laser class and Ainsley, Olympic champion. In the 2011 Finn Gold Cup in Australia, Ainsley was winning the event on the penultimate day of racing. However, Ainsley soon found himself in hot water, being disqualified from the two races that day 
pushing him out of the medal positions. But more worryingly, perhaps, there was the risk of being banned from the 2012 Olympic Games the following year. After finishing second in the ninth race, Ainsley boarded a camera boat and confronted the cameraman for getting too close to the racing and creating a wash that he felt helped one of his rivals. Ainsley later apologised, saying it was a very unfortunate situation and hopefully we can all learn from that and move on. After an investigation, it was decided no further action would be taken and Ainsley could compete in London. London 2012 was Ainsley's last Olympics. If he won, he would officially become the greatest Olympic sailor of all time, with four golds and a silver. However, the first six races did not go to plan. The Danish sailor, Ho Christensen, won the first two races, then placed second, seventh, first and second, giving him a total of 14 points. Ainsley trailed behind with 29 points. On the fourth day of racing, Ainsley started to turn the tide, beating the Dane for the first time in the event. Despite this, Ainsley was furious when he came off the water, accusing Ho Christensen of ganging up with the Dutch sailor to falsely claim he had touched the mark, forcing him to do a penalty turn. This fired Ainsley up, and he overhauled Ho Christensen as they rounded the final mark. After racing, Ainsley said, If that's the way they want to play it, then fine. They probably didn't want to fire me up for tomorrow. I wasn't happy with what those guys did. It's good to claw those points back today. It's going to be a lot of pressure for Jonas holding on to the lead for the next three races. You know, I was, I'm seriously uh, unhappy with that. Um, but, uh, you know, they made a big mistake because I'm angry and uh, he didn't want to make me angry. On the penultimate day of racing, Ainsley had a mixed set of results, placing sixth and first in the two races. That left him two points behind Ho Christensen going into the middle race. Ainsley was on 28 points and Ho Christensen on 26. This meant that, just as in the Sydney Games, all Ainsley needed to do was to finish ahead of his opponent, even if that meant being at the back of the fleet. Because the medal race was double points, so finishing one place ahead would allow Ainsley to gain two points on Ho Christensen. This would leave them tied on points, and the winner would be decided based on who beat who in the middle race. Before the start gun, Ainsley had already started match racing his rival, but it was to no avail with Ho Christensen getting the better start. Ainsley decided to tack off soon after the start to the right-hand side of the course, feeling that it was more favourable. Rounding the first mark, Ainsley rounded in sixth, with Ho Christensen back in ninth. After an incredible run, Ainsley rounded the next mark in second place, but Ho Christensen wasn't far behind in sixth. Ainsley decided it was now safer to start covering the Dane, but by the next mark, Ainsley had lost five places. Round the last Wimber mark, Ho Christensen and Ainsley were last and second last respectively, with only 10 seconds between them. After a nail-biting last run to the finish, Ainsley made a gain, finishing 17 seconds ahead of the Dane at the finish, making him officially the most successful Olympic sailor of all time. Between myself and Jonas and the Dutch sailor PJ Possum, I mean, that, that was sort of normal fare for racing. I mean, you're very close quarters, there's a lot at stake. It's inevitable that you're gonna, there's going to be a little uh, bit of uh, needling and, and, you know, we all have a huge amount of respect for each other, um, you know, uh, and that was something which was frustrating for me at the time, but, uh, you know, you, you use it to your advantage and, and move forwards. I think Ben felt terrible about what had happened. He met me when I got to the dock and just said, look, I'm really sorry. And he said, if there's anything we can do to get you back out on the water tomorrow, we'll do it. Yeah, so Ben sent an email to me and we've come up with a plan where we're going to use his boat, our foils, his rudders and our wing, and hopefully get out there in 20 knots and have another go at it. And it's victory again in race five for Team Japan, and what a moment! This pretty much guarantees their place in the San Francisco Grand Final.